Hello everybody and welcome to this video on the Koopman generator which is part of our mini lecture series on the Koopman operator. Before we dive in, um, let's recap what the Koopman operator is really about. So we have a dynamic system of discrete time nature often where we have f uh, as the flow map that maps our system state at time k to the next time instance. And the Koopman operator is then defined as the linear operator that acts on these observable functions psi in such a way that we in fact observe the state at the next time. So it's a linear operator that transforms the observable function. And the question that one can ask now is, um, we're always talking about the Koopman operator. So this Koopman operator, is there really only one? Right? And so why am I asking this? The reason is that most systems, or many, many systems, are continuous in time, from mechanics, um, electrodynamics, and so on. So this flow map is often artificial and is also maybe um, an artifact of, of data science where we have discrete time measurements of a system that was otherwise continuous in time. And so if we consider the time difference, between two um, points where we measure, so to be tau, usually this is um, continuous because we have these discrete time measurements um, that are equidistantly distributed in, in time, then we have that this k at tau is the time step for all k, right? So it's a constant time step. <clears throat> However, if we change the time step, so we measure, let's say, every second step only, or twice as many samples, then we would get a different Koopman operator associated with a different time scale. Okay. So what we really have is a Koopman operator, and I'm going to use different color here, that is parameterized by this time step. Okay. So a tau of psi of x is so it's a little bit abuse of notation now, but what we really have is psi of f, and now I'm using this time step again, tau of x. Which means that for every time step that we consider, there is one Koopman operator that gives us the evolution of the associated observable function with the similar time step. So what we do have, in fact, is no, not only one, but we have an entire family. Of operators. Or if we're talking in mathematical terms, what this is known as is a semi-group of operators. And what the semi-group uh, property means that we have a set of operators so infinitely many in fact for, for each tau with an associativity relation that means that we can compose different time steps so if we were to choose two time steps and advance uh, tau plus rho, then this is the same as composing both of these time steps and independent of the order. This is what we would call a semi-group property, associativity. In order to make it a full group, what we would require is that the inverse element, so k to the minus tau, and then as a consequence the identity is also elements of this, this group then, um, but we do not necessarily have invertibility because this is only valid for reversible systems and then you have a lot more additional properties, very nice structure, but this is not generally the case. So we are talking about semi-groups here. All right, and now we have this discrete time setting and 
we have quite arbitrarily chosen this time step, or maybe it is given to us due to measurements. However, um, often we have continuous time. This means that we consider a system x dot, so the time derivative of our state is given by a right-hand side f of x. Okay, and then the discrete time setting is recovered by integrating this right-hand side. So this is xk plus, and then the integral from tk to tk plus 1 f of x of t dt. Okay. And so you see this is what we would then call the flow f of xk. All right, and now one can ask uh, oneself, can we not, you know, find a continuous time analog to this Koopman operator that really allows us to become independent of the time step? And what we know about semigroups, so this is not a construct or concept that is related to the Koopman operator per se, but it's uh, the semigroup um, you know, concept that there exists a generator of this semigroup. Now, without going into too many details, what we can say is that each element of this group, so infinitely many here, can be generated using this generator. Right? So it's a, a very nice concept um, if for this infinite group, so a, a Lie group generator for, for this for the semigroup. And it can be constructed in a quite intuitive manner, I would say. Right? There's a lot of mathematical details. I can put a reference in the comments where you can look up a lot more you know, technical details and so on. Let's go rather um, straightforward into this, what we can define is that this generator L, if it acts on an observable function, so it's very similar to what the Koopman operator does, but we define it in the following way, that we're taking this time step tau to zero, and then consider a finite difference approximation, if you wish. So, k tau psi minus psi. Okay, so what you see here is sort of, and this is, um, if you wish, something like k to zero. So you see some sort of finite difference approximation for this operator at different, you know, prediction horizons or lag times, what they're often called also. So we have this finite difference approximation, and without going into um, yeah, the details, when does this exist, how can we do it, let's just say that we can, and what you then get, in a way, is the differentiation of this observable, right? So what you can find is that L psi is equal to the time derivative of this observable function. Okay, so quite naturally, this would be discrete, a time step, and this is the time derivative, similar to where we have our flow to be a discrete time mapping, and the little f being the, the mapping from the state to its temporal derivative. And similarly, this is what the generator does. So what we get is this one, and you can see that we can now use the chain rule. We have seen that psi, is a function that takes in the state x. So let's just take the chain rule here, which would mean d psi dx times dx dt. Okay, so simple chain rule. And what we can see now is that dx dt is exactly our system here, and so we can replace dx dt by or x dot by f of x. And so what we get is, this is now a gradient if we have 
more than 1x. So the derivative of or the gradient of our observable feature map and then times the right hand side. And what we see here is something very interesting. We have a time derivative of our psi and we have here a spatial derivative of our psi. Right? And so if we equate these two, then what you see is that we get a partial differential equation or PDE. And this is uh, a transport equation, so we do not lose any information. Simply what it does, it takes as F, the right-hand side of our dynamics, as the vector field and transports it um, in space over time. So a, a first-order PDE, without going into more details here, if we consider stochastic dynamic systems, then one would get a second order operator, a Laplace operator, and we get diffusion, which gives us much, much nicer properties. But for now, this is what we have. So the Koopman generator, applying it to an observable function equates to solving a partial differential equation of this type. And this has nice properties um, in, in, in some ways. We will also study in the next video how to approximate it from data and how to use it for time series prediction. But for now, um, one concluding remark may be that we can also study this object and learn a lot about the Koopman operator. Well, the spectrum is, is closely related. So this is independent of a certain time step, but possesses the same information as this one. Quite naturally, as it generates this family, the information has to be contained already. And so if we consider eigenfunctions now, And let's call it, so we, we start with the, the, the coupon operator. This is something we have seen many times. So the eigenfunction is defined as this, right? K phi is lambda phi, so this is the Koopman eigenvalue. Then we can carry over this eigenfunction to the generator setting. So applying the, the generator to this one is simply using this definition, right? So what I'm doing here is I'm using this equation, so I'm taking the limit tau towards zero, and then the Koopman operator applied to phi minus the function itself divided by tau. And what we can see here is now, um, well, there's a one in front of this and there's a lambda in front of this, right? I can simply plug this one in so this becomes lambda phi, and this becomes 1 times phi, if you wish. So what we get is lambda tau, and so this is not raising to a certain power, but this is just indexed by, by tau, minus 1. Oh, excuse me, I forgot the limit here. This is limit tau towards 0, and then lambda tau minus 1 by tau phi, okay? So all I've done is, you know, factor out the phi to show that this is what we have. And what you can then see is that if you take this limit, then what you get is really the logarithm of this eigenvalue. So log lambda tau phi. And this is just giving it a new name, mu Phi. Okay, so what we see is eigenfunctions of the Koopman operator are also eigenfunctions of the Koopman generator or vice versa. So it doesn't matter which one we use for approximation and the eigenvalues are also linked using the logarithm. And so this is also quite natural. We have seen this for continuous time and discrete time linear systems and other videos where we can relate, you know, going the other way by exponentiating the, the continuous time eigenvalue, we get eigenvalues for the discrete time system. So very, very natural extension, if you wish, of, of classical techniques in linear systems. And this is very, very useful. We can now try to approximate the generator and learn a lot about the system. And this has quite a few benefits over the Koopman operator. Also has quite a few drawbacks because what we will 
see what we need in the end is time derivatives of our measurements. And these are sometimes hard to get by. But this is a topic for the next video. For now, thanks a lot for your attention and see you then for Generator eDMD. Thank you.